Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Welcome to those online um, for our next lecture. What can we say about the gentleman that's coming up to uh, give us the lecture? He, his, his partner is more famous, as in Stu the Rabbit. But give it up for your chair of trustees, Mr Nick Lear. Thank you very much. Uh, you're very kind. Um, just to say, you are guinea pigs. So, no, guinea pigs don't snort, they squeak. So, um, this is the first time I've delivered any sort of magic lecture uh, live, and first time I've delivered this, obviously, as a result. So, uh, your feedback afterwards be appreciated. Um, I have a theory about magic, and that theory is that um, all magic should involve wonder. And so I've called this lecture The Wonder of Magic. Um, I think it should start with wonder and finish with wonder. By that, I mean that it starts with the magician thinking, hmm, I wonder. We'll come back to that in a minute. But should finish with the audience full of wonder. Wow, that was, what was? Wow, how did? All those sorts of questions. The sort of reaction that we saw when Joe opened his hand and saw three spongebobs. So let me share with you some wanderings. Wanderings come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. Uh, could be wondering about something you might like to use for an effect. Um, I often, when I'm going shopping, uh, particularly with my wife, I have time on my hands. And uh, so I wander, W-A-N-D-E-R, around uh, and just look and think, hmm, could I use that? I wonder if. And um, secondhand shops, charity shops, are a real boon. Fantastic what you can find in there. I wonder sometimes, I'm a, a Baptist minister, and I sometimes wonder, can I use this to make a point, to make an illustration, to engage my congregation? And if so, how? I wonder, whoops, I wonder what might happen, let's go back, if I do something a little bit differently. So if I've been performing a routine for a while, what if I changed it? Or during a performance, something might go wrong, and it actually turns out to be far better than what I'd got planned. And so I wonder if I could make that happen every time. I wonder if I use different words with the illusion. Would it improve it? I wonder whether it's possible sometimes just to create an effect that does dot, dot, dot. And if so, how? And wondering, and sometimes the wondering goes on even subconsciously, can lead to all sorts of wonderful outcomes. So what I'm going to share with you today are some, the products of some of my wonderings, W-O-N-D, and um, these are things that I've come up with um, most of them. The last one is something um, that I, I bought from Mission Magic. Um, and uh, so um, I'll, I'll come to that at the end. Um, first wondering um, is it happened when um, I was playing Boggle. Boggle is a word game. Um, you have uh, 16 letter cubes. And uh, they sit in a, a holder, you put a lid on, you shake them up, and uh, then you take the lid off. And under normal boggle rules, you've got a couple of minutes with everyone around the, the set, and you've got to find word that, where the letters link up, and they're of three letters or more, and you then score according to if you've got a unique word. Anyway, I was playing boggle with my wife. I was probably losing, and I wondered, can I cheat? <laughs> And that made me wonder, hmm, never mind cheating. I wonder if I could use boggle in magic. I wonder if there's some sort of way of making this game magical. So, this is um, uh, quite an old boggle set, but just to give you an idea. So you've got, oh, sorry, I should have shown it. 16 letter cubes. You put the lid on. You give it a shake. You settle all the letters down. And then 
you have to try and find the words. Now, it got me wondering, can I make that magical? <laughs> this is also going to give you an insight into what's going on in here. Um, I did some calculations, and there are millions, if not billions, of possible combinations of letters on those cubes landing in different places. It's virtually impossible to predict which way they're going to end up. That left me with a problem. I wanted to maintain the, the randomness without having the randomness. Um, the randomness, I felt, would be good cover for me being sneaky. Um, if you've never seen Boggle before, the fact that it comes out of a manufactured box hopefully, subconsciously, puts you at ease. Oh, well, that's something he's bought from a shop. Or that's, uh, that's their family Boggle set, which is usually how I introduce it. If I produce a magical-looking prop, as I will do a little bit later, immediately people think, hmm, that's a magical-looking prop. So I wanted to put people at their ease. I wanted it to be something familiar and not looking magical, not suspicious. So I got an old boggle set, and um, I started wondering. I wonder if it's possible, or is this just a bizarre thought? Um, then how, I wonder, could I get the cubes to be in the right place? So I had various thoughts. One was magnets. But the problem is you can't guarantee that a particular cube will magnetically sit in the right slot. Then I thought, <laughs> I thought of pieces of elastic. Um, but they're going to get tangled up when you shake it up. So then I thought, well, probably the cubes shouldn't be moving. What if I just stuck them in there to start with? Um, and they're, they're just in place. Um, if that's the case, how can, I, whoops, how can I make it look good enough? How can I make it look like the game is still happening, I haven't done anything sneaky? So how can I make it sure that people don't see that, for example? Um, then I thought, well, OK, wonder what the maximum number of cubes I could stick down in the boggle set is that still allows me to look normal when we do the trick. Now, 16 letter cubes, there are nine stuck down there. Um, this is the absolute maximum I've ever gone with. Um, and um, yeah, well, you, you can judge in a minute whether you think uh, it works at that number. Um, but I went and got loads and loads of boggle sets. Bought them on eBay, I went to charity shops, and I was getting them for a couple of quid each. I still have loads at home. I might have cornered the market in second-hand boggle sets. <laughs> um, and so I just started experimenting with letters in different places, different sorts of alignment, and, and so on. Um, now, there is a problem, because normally, when people play Boggle, they just hold on to the top and they go like that. Well, if they go like that, they're going to see that some cubes are not moving. So I've got to, come, got to get around that. Well, the simple answer I came up with is I'm going to demonstrate to them what I want them to do, and I'm going to turn it upside down. And so I want you to shake it like that, and then turn it over. And by the turn they've turned it over, enough of the cubes have settled that it looks OK. And then you've just got to tap it so that they all settle down. Problem solved. However, in an early performance, under this sort of lighting, when it went turned over, they could see the stuck letters through the plastic at the bottom of the bottle set. <laughs> Fatal flaw. So then I thought, well, all I'll do is I'll buy some sticky backed felt and I'll stick it on the bottom. And nobody has ever questioned why there's felt stuck in the bottom of the boggle set. <laughs> but it completely masks my problem. So, yeah, how could I ensure people don't see the secret? Turn it over, cover the, the bottom bit. And then I wondered, 
can I make this happen in the spectator's hands rather than just in mine? Because if it's in their hands, the heat is off me, and they feel, wow, this is something that I have done, and it felt fair to me. So, um, I came up with turning upside down and also demonstrating. So very clearly, what I say to the audience member, and we'll have a go with this with uh, a couple of you in a minute, is I want you to, to do exactly what I do, and it's important I say that, do exactly what I do, put your hands like that, turn it over, give it a good shake, and then turn it back over and try and settle the cubes in like that. I've demonstrated it, and they, if they take it and they're like that, I say, no, put your hands like that because it's easier to turn it over. <laughs> it's not. It's, it just means it, it masks what's going on. It hides the naughtiness. Um, so um, we go with that. I think nine cubes is too many. It doesn't sound right to me. But if, and I've found a lot of people don't know. I mean, how many of you have never seen Boggle before just now? Yeah, you see, there's a lot of people who haven't. So actually, I figured that they wouldn't know what it feels like or sounds like. So I might be able to get away with that. Um, and I tried it and tried it, in, and I used to perform um, in a lot of situations where I was doing walk-around magic. So um, then um, I thought, well, other than where can I get cheap sets? <laughs> eBay, charity shops. That's if you, if you want to do that. I um, wonder what the story is. How can I make this something that they want to engage with? So first of all, this is my family boggle set. My wife and I love playing boggle. And one of the things we've noticed is that because the two of us know each other really well, we will often come up with the same words. And I don't know if you've had that experience where you say, you, you have one thought, and someone you know, someone you're close to, someone you like, someone who knows you well, has the same thought, and you say the same word at the same time. Well, we're going to see if we can make that happen today. So um, I need two people who know each other pretty well to come up and help me. Um, you could be good friends, you could be a couple. Um, don't be shy, please. Or I'm going to pick on someone. OK. Give them a big round of applause. Most unexpected, Audrey is up on stage. <laughs> yes, how strange. Yeah, and Peter too, come and join us. So, um, have you ever played Boggle before? No. No, have you? Right. So, Boggle is a word game um, where you've got 16 letter cubes, and um, each cube has six sides, different letters on each one. There are millions of possible combinations of those cubes. Now, you know each other, you've been together a long time, haven't you? 47 years married. 47 years married. So, yeah. So, you probably know each other pretty well by now. Yeah. And we're just going to prove how well you know each other by playing a little game. Hopefully. Now, Audrey, yeah. would you like to play Boggle or would you like to play cards? Or Boggle. Boggle. Okay. So, we'll start with Peter, if you don't mind, because okay. Peter and I are going to have a quick card game. Okay. Peter. We have here a pack of cards. Okay. I'm going to flick through. I'd like you to say stop as I go through. Stop. Okay. Take that card. Don't show me. In fact, just place it face down on there. I don't want you to see it either. I just want you to put your finger on it and allow the card content for the other side to absorb up your arm into your brain. Okay. You got it? Yeah. You don't know what it is, but you've got it. Okay. That's good. OK, keep, you don't have to keep your finger on it now, but just make sure that I don't move that. In fact, could you just push it to the front there? Perfect. Lovely. Well done. Audrey. We're going to play Boggle. OK. And so what I want you to do is do what I do in a minute. So hold it like that, because yeah. then you're going to turn it upside down. Give it a good shake. Turn it back over. And then just keep tapping it until all the bits have dropped in yep. like that. Got it. OK? Yep. So that's it. Turn it over. Give it a good shake. Turn it over. Turn it over. Face down. That's it. Give it a good shake. Right. Turn it back again. Settle them all in. OK. 
Put it down for me, please. I don't want to touch it. Take the lid off. Perfect. Now, Audrey, you and I are going to, and ordinary, this would be around a table so everyone can see what's going on. You and I are going to look for words of three letters or more where the letters are next to each other. They can be up, down, diagonal. Right. But you can only use a letter right. once each time. Right. I so, can see one already. What word can you see? Sky. Sky, no, S-K-Y. Sky. Yeah, no, that's okay. It doesn't matter. It's okay. different. Right. Um, well, there's two, T-W-O. That's what obvious. Um, what else can you see? Ted. Ted, okay. Um, pad, P-A-D. Very good. Um, and... Uh, Oh, Richard's even going to try the, the close-up. It, it, don't, don't worry about that, Richard, because we're going to show a, see a video of this in a minute. Um, I just want to see everyone to see a performance. Um, can you see anything, oh, any longer words? Because we've only had three-letter ones so far. Uh, T-E-N-S, tens. Yeah. Um, N-E-O, neo. No. No. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, yes. No. S-P-A-D-E-S, spades. He's good. Now, we've got a playing card there. Right. Peter has been thinking about that card, and because you've been married to him for 47 years, yeah. you know what's in his mind, even before he does. <laughs> Sometimes. So, you put we, it there, we've seen the, the word two, yes. and we've seen spades yes. in there. Well done. Now, how well do you know each other? Really well, I think. Peter, would you like to show us your card? What is it? It is the two of spades. Give them an enormous round of applause. Thank you very much. You can take your seats. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Now, because I do walk around magic, uh, where there's probably tables set out like this, um, other tables will be earwigging. I don't want them to have two of spades. Oh, oh, they have the two of spades. So, um, amongst the many sets, I've made up lots of different ones. <laughs> with different words, so that I can just nip out the back, switch the word, and come back and, uh, and do it. And, um, and I've come up with different ways of forcing the words as well. So you can force a number if you can spell a number. Um, you can force a playing card. Uh, you can force any word. Um, so um, if uh, I, I might give, and you'll see this in the video in a minute, um, Tom Tancy Redstorm writing. It's a nice big book, 800 plus pages. Um, and I, I won't do this just for time, but normally I give it to someone and say, have a look through, okay? Um, with my playing card, I'm just gonna flick through and stop at a page uh, when they say stop. And um, so, just Gudrun, can you see the first word on that page? Yes. What's that word? Money. Money, and that's one of my forces. <laughs> um, now, I can't tell you how to do that because it's, it's uh, not my uh, force to sell, but if you've got a way of forcing a word, um, you can do it. I could talk about this being my favourite book, and um, so um, yeah. Basically, I've had lots of fun with this, and um, particularly I love the idea of being able to to talk about how a couple know each other. That's the story. How well do you know the other person? Do you complete their sentences? Do you know what they're thinking and, and so on? Um, and if you've got a couple who've been married as long as Audrey and Peter, even better, because you can really play on that. So um, I then needed a name for this, because I decided I needed a name. And um, can we, yeah, the name has actually been in front of you all the time. Mind boggled. Um, and then uh, my daughter, who was doing a media uh, course at the time, said, oh, I'll do your video, Dad. So this video you're about to see is um, each, uh, there's two different performances going on, um, one in a pub, one in a couple's front room. Um, and they were all taken in one shot. There's no editing to, to um, splice in extra bits. The reactions you see are genuine. Oh, I've got a friend to design the logo as well. Can we, a little bit louder? Uh, That's it. Bobble is a word game, and um, you've got 16 letters, and you put the lid on, and then set them all down, and the idea normally when you play Bobble is that everybody, different people, are trying to 
get as many words or three letters or more. So we're going to choose a word. And uh, in order to do that, first of all, can we just check that book out? You, you could use a different one if you've got one hanging around. Um, it's take that one, slide it face down into the envelope, so you don't see it, no one sees it. Remember that word? Okay. That word hopefully will come back in the Which you and I are going to play ball with. Um, since you know how to play ball, yeah. um, for the purposes of the camera, I'll just demonstrate what I want you to use. Take a good shake. Take a good shake. Set them down. Take a good shake. What we're looking for is any words of three letters or more that you can see. Okay. 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 No, <laughs> that's what it's meant to do. How on earth? Hey, is there anything else? I can't see anything else. We'll go with eight. In fact, I did the eight of spots. Bearing in mind, you chose it from the pack. You turn them all up, you get them a good shape. And then... Let's have a look. Show everyone the camera. Show the camera. The ace of clubs. That's crazy. So that's mind boggled. Um, thank you. There's a lot more to it than I've explained here. Um, you're welcome to use it if you like. If you want my thinking on it, um, then. Um, there's a lot in this. These are all my kind of step-by-step -step instructions and my thinking about different ways of presenting. Um, and, I'm um, oh, sorry, this is the latest incarnation of Boggle that they've produced, which is a lot more compact. I, haven't, I only picked this one up two days ago, or just before I came here from TK Maxx, 6 dollars for a brand new one. Um, and I haven't even opened it to see if I need to put something on the back or whatever. Um, but... Um, it's still available, is what I'm trying to say. If you'd like one of these, um, just because I'm slightly cheeky, I'll sell you one for a tenner. <laughs> but I haven't got a card machine, so it'll need to be cash. Um, but um, just because it gives you all the extra bits of information, and because I, I did sell it to someone else here, and I just feel it's unfair to give it to you if I sold it to them. Um, so, that's mind-boggled. Second wandering. Genuinely, um, I woke up one, sun, one morning and I dreamt of an effect in which people were guessing what I had been doing each time. And, and, each time, and it was a card effect, and every time um, I worked through it, um, they, got, they got it right. And um, it just felt like, hmm, there might be something here. So um, I wondered... Could I actually make that work? Or had I just eaten too much cheese? <laughs> um, and so as I thought about it and pondered it and played around with the idea a bit, I decided, yes, it was possible, but I was going to need to do some gimmick making. So um, I started trying to work out if I could make the gimmick that I thought I needed for this. Um, and I discovered that I couldn't make it realistic enough using my own skills. So then I looked around, and I found a company that could make it for me uh, for a relatively reasonable price, as far as I was concerned. Um, so I ordered some. And one of my ideas for this was I wanted to leave the spectator with a souvenir. I wanted them to have something at the end that they would take away that would remind them of that moment, that wonder that they'd experienced but in such a way that they wouldn't be able to work back and find out the method. Um, so I 
had conversations with various magicians that I know and tried out prototypes on them uh, and gradually evolved into um, what I felt was a pretty workable routine. And then I thought, well, what's the story? What is the purpose of doing this? And part of the story I decided was this isn't about me, it's about you, the audience. Mind readers read your minds. I wanted to see, can I make you read my mind? That was going to be my story. Um, and as before, I thought, well, I need a name for it. So I decided to call it Afterthoughts. And I intend to try and perform that for you now, if I can find the right deck of cards. Where have they got? There they are. So this is not a full deck of cards. What I have here are the aces and the kings of, uh, sorry, aces, the queens and kings of all the suits and the twos and fours of all the suits. Um, and um, now you've seen them like that, and particularly for those watching on camera, I'm going to mix it up just so that you don't know what's going on, because um, I don't either. And um, I'm going to see if I can get you to read my mind. Not yet, and you're not going to get my bank details or anything like that. You're just going to read my, my mind as to what I've just done. So I'm going to sort these cards out. Um, basically, I'm currently sorting them into high cards and low cards. Um, and uh, let me think. Uh, that one, that one, that one. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Um, that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one, and I should have got, I should have done it slightly easier, should have eight in each hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I've missed one. What have I missed? That one. Okay. So, high cards or no, low cards, or low cards and high cards, you don't know which is which. And, okay, I'm going to get rid of that pile. So, John, read my mind. What have I got left in my hand, high cards or low cards? High cards. Okay. Okay. Sure you don't want to change your mind? Okay, high card. Okay, so... We have, in the high cards, queens and kings, okay? Or kings and queens. I've made a choice. Uh, Reg, have I got the kings or the queens in my hand? Kings, you sure? Okay. Um, the kings, okay. Um, so there are four suits, clubs, hearts, spades, diamonds. Um, black cards or red cards? Uh, Gudrun, have I got the black, they're apparently kings, have I got the black kings or the red kings in my hand? The red, the red kings. Okay. So hearts and diamonds or diamonds and hearts or hearts and diamonds, I'm going to mix them up because I looked at them. And you might be watching where I'm looking. Okay. So red, hearts, or diamonds. Let's get rid of that one. Okay. If you have read my mind correctly, so far I've got the king of hearts in my hand. Um, Going to make it even harder. So. <laughs> it's folded in half. Um, pen, 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 pen. Okay, uh, Cam, think of any easy to spell word um, that is something, we haven't set this up, just any word you like that I can write on the, the card. Tell me. Word. Word? W-O-R-D, right. Not worm. Okay, so one half of the card has word on it and one doesn't. 
and I'm going to mix them up so you don't know which is which. Okay, so now... Uh, Joe, is it? Yeah. Joe, have I got the half of the card which has got the word word on it, or is this the blank half? With the word. With the word. Okay. Now, I'm going to lock in this choice by using, this is a, a kind of um, label badge thing, so that is now sealed in, nothing can happen to that card. Okay? Locked in. Now, let's just recap what's happened. I started off with 16 cards, kings and queens, twos and fours. I got rid of one half, and then I uh, went down from there each time, taking away half of the cards, and each time one of you read my mind, we hope, and worked out what I had done, right down till we got to Cam, who chose the word word, which I wrote on one half of a card, which I tore in half, and then got rid of one half, and Joe said that that card, this half of the card here, has got the word word written on it. Now, remember, I acted before you every single time. I'd already committed to it every single time. You know, I worked out the probability of you getting this right just by luck. And in statistical terms, the chances of you being right every single time is somewhere between next to impossible and highly improbable. <laughs> so if this is right, and it's pure luck that's done it, then those of you who've helped me probably should go and buy a lottery ticket. And then invest it in your local church. Um, <laughs> second possibility is you actually did read my mind, which is freaky, and if so, stop it. You've got enough information. You don't need any more. The third possibility is that actually I was subtly influencing you all the way through to choose what I wanted you to choose. There's a fourth possibility. And that fourth possibility, ladies and gentlemen, is this just was magic. This is the king of hearts with the word word written across the top. There you go, Joe. Thank you. Um, this is something I did offer to a magic company. Mark Shortland saw it and he said, ooh, that someone, someone might be interested in that. And they really liked it, but they said it just wasn't for them. So I've decided to keep the secret for that to myself, I'm afraid. <laughs> but what I wanted to do was to share with you the wanderings, what led me to that point. Because it was a whole process. Um, at any one time, I could have given up, but I kept going with plan A, plan B, plan C, kept changing until... We got there. How are we doing for time? We're doing okay. Good. Third wandering. I wondered if I could do something really different from my usual style of things. And um, I wanted to create an illusion that an audience could join in with and everyone get the same experience. So if you've got a smartphone um, and it's with you, could you get it out, switch it on, unlock it, whatever? And if you haven't got it already, could you... Um, if you don't mind, if you don't want to, you don't have to, but could you, from whatever app store you use, download what three words? What three words? It's the word what, number three, then words. What three words is an amazing app. Basically, what they have done is they have divided the whole planet into three meter squares. The whole planet. And each Three meter square has a unique name made up of three words. Hence, what three words? And so the idea is that wherever you are in the world, you can type in the three words for, or you can look on what three words, find out those three words, tell somebody else those three words in that order, and they can find you. So you can imagine, mountain rescue. I'm lost. What's the what three words? Vroom, they're there. Um, it's also useful for if you've got someone doing a delivery to um, large premises and it's come to the door at such and such. Um, it's, a, it's an amazing program. I don't know how they did it, but what three words? Have, have, have any of you got it on your phones now? 
Good. Excellent. So, um, I wanted, the reason I've asked people to use smartphones is that most people, lots of people, have got smartphones, unless you're Peter. Um, and so it's something lots of people can join in with. Um, and um, it's free. It's a free app. I should have said that before you started downloading. So there's no cost to you, there's no cost to me. Um, and it's the sort of app that, um, because every, word, every square has a unique name, made me think, hmm, what if I can force the three words? Then I know where that person is going to be thinking of. So um, I put this together. Um, and um, sometimes I've actually put the uh, web page live, because you can it's a web page as well as an app, live on the screen, and we typed it in as we go. But for the sake of, of uh, brevity here, we haven't. By the way, runs.others.fried is about here, because that's the conference center. That's the corner of the, the, the um, hall we're in, and the stage is just, no, no, sorry, I'm over there. But um, so if you type in run, runs.others.fried, that will take you to here. Um, so I'm going to attempt to perform this for you. Um, another of my wonderings is how can I make it displayed better? Um, this is just a box that a close-up mat came in that I've covered in sticky back plastic and then stuck uh, on top of it um, a, one of the plastic ring binder ends. It works. So what I have got here is an unusual deck of cards. On it, I have written loads and loads of words. And in my normal presentation, I'll explain about the What Three Words app, but I've done that for you as already. So um, we need to choose three words um, randomly from among us. So um, Justine, just where you are, um, I'm going to flick through the pack. Would you say stop as I go through? There. OK. So just to show you, Justify, nearly Justine. Justifies is the word, but we're going to take that card there, that face down card, and I'm going to put it in here like that, and we're going to find another card. Uh, chill. Okay, same again. There, okay. So this time, the word could have been marble, but it's not. We're taking the top card there, which is upside down, put like that. OK. And Ian, say again. Stop. There. OK. So that word is type, but we're not using type. We're using this one. Oops, that's upside down as well. So we have selected three words, and there are billions of possible combinations. You imagine the whole world divided into three meter squares, billions of possible combinations of words. I didn't write them all down, but there's 52 cards in a pack. Um, so we have now got three words. And the words we have got are, you can zoom in on the camera if you want on this one, we have got eyelash, votes, submits. Eyelash, votes, submits. If you've got the app, would you type in eyelash.votes.submits? Eyelash dot votes dot submits. Don't say anything when you've got it, but just put your hand up if you, when, when, you've, when you've got it. Eyelash dot votes dot submits. Um, that's, there we are. That's better. It's not glaring then. Yeah, a few people have got it. Keep going. Submits. S-U-B-M-I-T-S. Submits. Okay, so have, have more of you got there now? You've got, you've, you've found somewhere, eyelash.votes.submits. If you haven't been able to find it now, you can um, go and, and check it out later. So um, do you recognize that place? Yeah? Um, someone, uh, Neil, you, you've, you've, what, where, where have you got there? 
Christ the Redeemer statue in Brazil. Okay, that's a pretty good place to go. That's a nice place to choose. Um, This isn't just a piece of paper. This is an envelope. And before we started, I had an idea about what you guys might choose from all of the words in all the different orders they could be in. Um, And this is what I came up with. Christ the Redeemer in Brazil. Thank you very much. Now, if I were to do this properly on stage, I would make bigger cards so that people could see them. Ideally, I'd get them printed rather than handwritten, but this is kind of a work in progress. Um, And ideally, with the reveal, it would be up on a screen or something or a nice big poster. Um, What I've done... um, Oh, it's it's over there. Um, I've actually... Uh, I found some copyright-free photographs uh, from around the world of landmarks, and I've printed, uh, I've got them printed professionally um, so that they're really decent quality photos. And then, um, a bit like with Mind Boggled, actually, in here are the three words for all of those. So I can repeat it somewhere else just easily enough so I could just take the next three, and that would be another of my four uh, locations, um, so it's easily repeatable. And uh, to reset, that's reset. If you're not sure about how I got the cards to them, to you, I'll talk to you about the slip cut force later. Thank you. How are we doing? OK. I guess if you're anything like me, you have looked at things from time to time and just thought, ooh, I wonder, I like that. I would love to do that. Um, I saw a video for this on the Mission Magic website, and as soon as I saw it, I thought, ooh, I like that. And then I showed it to my wife, and I tell you what, when my wife Sally says she likes an illusion, it's a winner. Because she's mostly ambivalent about my magic, which is a bit disappointing. Um, But when I show her something and she goes, wow, that's amazing, I think, I need that. Um, I then had to work out if I could afford it, but Mission Magic is very reasonable, so I was able to afford it. Um, And um, part of the I wonder if I can afford it was, I wonder how much I will use it. Because if you're like me, You've got loads of stuff in cupboards and drawers back home that you saw and you thought, wow, that's amazing, I want that. And then it stayed in the cupboard or the drawer. And to invest into something like that, you've got to want to use it. Um, So I talked to Sally about it, and she said, well, yeah, you could use it in dot, dot, dot. And okay, yeah. And when Sally says yes, it's a good idea. So then I wondered what messages it can convey by way of uh, using it in my ministry. I'm going to perform it for you first, and then I'll talk to you about some of those. So, it is called the Ultra Die Penetration, available from Mission Magic. Now, this particular version of it is not available from Mission Magic at the moment. However, I talked to Mark about this beforehand. Have you still got one left? There's a wooden die for a tennis penetration. Which is very well-priced. Yeah. Um, a very well-priced one. That, that one I, I, I could get. If you want this, Mark could get it as well. But the effect of the wooden one is the same as this. Oh, it's yeah. just wooden. Okay. So we have a high-quality plastic tube made of the highest-quality plastic. We have two high-quality luxury aluminium blades. You will notice, if you're able to see, that in the sides of this are two slots made perfectly for aluminium blades. Okay. And you know, because you've seen already, that this is called the ultra dye penetration. So it won't surprise you to know that we have a dye. And yes, this is a dye, not a dice, because dice is plural of dye. And what we do is we take the die, we put it into the tube, like that. Okay. And we know, because we've lived, 
that solid things can't go through solid things. It just does not happen. We know that it's impossible. And yet, what you're about to see will go beyond your experience. It will take you to a different level beyond what you know. Watch this. Did you see that? Goes right the way through the blade. I know. I was gobsmacked too. I wouldn't have applauded. Um, <laughs> thank you. Remember, it's physically impossible. It cannot go through. It does not work. And yet your eyes have seen it. It's physically impossible. And yet you just saw it. You know, on Easter Sunday, some people started seeing Jesus alive. And he'd been killed three days before. They knew it. He'd been buried. He'd been sealed in a tomb. They knew it was not possible to see Jesus. And yet they saw him. He was there. He was there in front of their eyes. And because they saw it, they had to change their perception on what actually was possible. i pause there. I would say more normally but you know the answers. So I, um, I, that's kind of my working at the moment, how I will use that. Um, could also use it a little bit later on in the story, with Jesus kind of appearing in a locked room, physically going through uh, a locked door. Um, might, sometimes might use it to talk about if we've got seemingly impenetrable barriers in our life, we just can't get through, but with God's help, we can. Um, the Mission Magic um, pack will come with other ideas as well uh, for routines. Yeah, Paul, Paul Morley, um, whenever he had a die in a trick, he would always, he would often refer to numbers on the die. Okay. And then there's also like, you know. Oh, so Paul Morley would well, refer to the numbers on the die. So like, you know, four, there's four Gospels, one, there's one God, three, Trinity, okay. two. Uh, but he would also, you can do puns like, well, what are you willing to die for? Or, oh. you know, life's on a roll, and uh, isn't it a bit of a gamble, and all that sort of stuff. So yeah. there's plenty to go with. Um, ask Stephen about puns for dollars, <laughs> and he'll get loads. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, or, and this I've come to think of as actually perfectly legitimate, even for a Christian minister, it could simply be an entertaining piece of magic. It's allowed. Yes. Of creation. So if you want a really smart way of uh, explaining a die, numbers one to six, Tony is your man. Thank you. Sorry, it's just we, we have to stop imminently because we're going to do our photo. And um, so I have finished. Um, so thank you very much. Um, we're going to gather for the photo with uh, Ian in a moment, and you're going to get instructions from Neil at the back. As Ladies I've and finished. gentlemen, one more time for your chair out of trustees, Mr. Nick Lear. Thank you. Thank you, Nick. Right, folks, if you'd like to um, just remain in here um, whilst we get everything set up, the stage and what have you, we may be moving chairs and things like that. So please bear with us. Please do not...